Sleep apnea is a medical condition that's more than just a snore. It can have serious implications on one's health and quality of life. It's known to affect many people, especially military veterans. Understanding this condition, its causes, and its relation to VA disability is crucial. Now, why is this important for veterans? Well, veterans may experience sleep apnea due to service-related conditions or injuries. The VA recognizes this and provides disability compensation for it. However, the process of claiming this compensation and understanding the VA's rating system for sleep apnea may be complex and confusing. We're here to simplify that journey for you. From explaining what sleep apnea is, to guiding you through the claiming process and even dealing with potential claim denials. So, buckle up as we dive into the world of sleep apnea and VA disability. First off, let's unravel the mystery that is sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a common but serious sleep disorder where your breathing repeatedly stops and starts while you're asleep. The term apnea itself is derived from a Greek word apnoia, which means want of breath. So literally, sleep apnea means want of breath while sleeping. This condition comes in three types. Obstructive sleep apnea, the most common form, occurs when throat muscles relax. Central sleep apnea, which happens when your brain doesn't send proper signals to the muscles controlling your breathing. And lastly, complex sleep apnea syndrome, a combination of both obstructive and central sleep apnea. But what triggers sleep apnea? Well, different factors can cause different types of sleep apnea. For instance, obstructive sleep apnea happens when the muscles at the back of your throat relax too much, causing a blockage. On the other hand, central sleep apnea is more about the brain signals. Here, your brain fails to transmit signals to your breathing muscles, leading to controlled breathing to momentarily stop. Risk factors vary too. For obstructive sleep apnea, factors like excess weight, narrowed airway, high blood pressure, chronic nasal congestion, and smoking can contribute. Central sleep apnea has its own set of risk factors, including being middle-aged or older, heart disorders using opioid medications, and stroke. It's important to note that while sleep apnea can affect anyone, these risk factors increase chances of its occurrence. And if left untreated, sleep apnea can lead to various health complications such as hypertension, heart problems, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and liver problems, among others. Understanding the condition is the first step to managing it. Remember, knowledge is power. And the more you know about sleep apnea, the better equipped you are to deal with it. Now that we have a better understanding of sleep apnea, let's explore how it is rated by the VA. Also, help us spread awareness on topics like this by hitting the like button, and to stay informed about your VA benefits, hit subscribe. The VA rating system for sleep apnea may seem complicated, but don't worry, we're here to break it down for you. The VA rating system for sleep apnea is based on the severity of the condition and its impact on the veteran's daily life. The rating percentages are 0%, 30%, 50%, and 100%. At a 0% rating, the veteran's sleep apnea is acknowledged, but it doesn't significantly interfere with their daily activities. There's no monthly monetary compensation at this level. However, it's crucial to note that a 0% rating can still qualify a veteran for health care benefits through the VA. At 30%, the veteran's sleep apnea is deemed to have a moderate impact on their daily life. This might include symptoms like persistent daytime sleepiness, despite treatment. As of 2024, a single veteran with no dependents would receive a monthly compensation of $524.31 at this rating. A 50% rating indicates that the veteran's sleep apnea requires the use of a breathing assistance device, such as a CPAP machine. As of 2024, this rating level provides a monthly compensation of $1,075.16 for a single veteran with no dependents. Lastly, a 100% rating is assigned when the veteran's sleep apnea is so severe that it results in chronic respiratory failure. As of 2024, the monthly compensation for a single veteran with no dependents at this level is $3,737.85. Remember, these rating percentages are not cumulative. They're based on the severity of the condition and its impact on the veteran's life. Also, these compensation amounts are subject to change as they're adjusted annually to account for cost of living increases. With this knowledge, let's take a look at how to claim these conditions. Claiming a condition can be a daunting task, so let's simplify it. To claim a condition like sleep apnea, the first step is to file a claim with the VA. You can do this online, by mail, or in person at a VA office. 
it's crucial to provide as much evidence as possible, including medical records, doctor's reports, and any other documentation that supports your claim. Now, let's talk about the CNP exam or compensation and pension examination. This is a key part of the claim process where a VA healthcare provider evaluates your condition. It's not a regular doctor's visit. Instead, it's an assessment to determine the severity of your condition and how it affects your daily life. So don't hold back during the examination. Make sure you fully explain your symptoms and how they impact you. It's also worth noting that you can claim conditions secondary to sleep apnea to potentially increase your VA rating. Secondary conditions are those that have been caused or aggravated by your primary service-connected condition. For instance, if you have heart problems or mental health conditions that have been worsened by your sleep apnea, these may be considered secondary conditions. To claim a secondary condition, you need to provide evidence that your primary condition has contributed to its development or progression. This might include medical records showing a clear link between your sleep apnea and the secondary condition, or a doctor's statement confirming this connection. Remember, the process of claiming a condition can take some time, and it's not uncommon for claims to be initially denied. But don't get disheartened. There are resources available to guide you through the process and ensure you get the support you need. But what if the claim is denied? Let's find out. A denied claim can be disheartening, but it's not the end of the road. When you receive a denial for your VA disability claim, it can be a tough pill to swallow, but it's essential to remember that this doesn't mean your journey is over. The first step is understanding why your claim was denied. To do this, carefully review the claim notification form sent by the VA. This form will typically outline the reason for denial. This could range from a lack of medical evidence to an issue with your service connection. Once you've pinpointed the reason for denial, it's time to start thinking about your appeal. The VA offers several avenues for appeal, and choosing the best one for your situation can make all the difference. You could opt for a supplemental claim where you present new and relevant evidence, or a higher level review where a senior reviewer re-evaluates your claim. Another option is to request a board appeal, where a veterans law judge at the Board of Veterans Appeals reviews your case. Now, this process can be overwhelming and it's okay to seek help. One of the best resources at your disposal is Veterans Service Organizations, or VSOs. These organizations offer free services and can guide you through the appeal process. They can help gather evidence, prepare your appeal, and even represent you at hearings. Another great resource is VA accredited attorneys or agents. While these professionals do charge fees, they only get paid if you win your appeal and their fees come directly from your back pay, not out of your pocket. Lastly, don't underestimate the power of your fellow veterans. Online forums and social media groups can provide invaluable insights and advice from those who've walked this path before. Remember, a denied claim is not a dead end, but a new beginning. So dust yourself off, gather your strength, and take that next step. The road might be long and winding, but with determination and the right resources, you can navigate the appeals process and secure the benefits you rightfully deserve. We've covered a lot of ground today, so let's summarize. We began by defining sleep apnea, a medical condition characterized by interrupted breathing during sleep. This is often caused by a blockage in the throat or a signaling issue in the brain. We then delved into the Veterans Affairs, or VA rating system for sleep apnea. This system assigns a disability rating from 0 to 100% based on the severity of a veteran's condition. Higher ratings result in increased monthly compensation. We also discussed how veterans can claim conditions, including secondary conditions that can increase their rating. We explored what to expect at a compensation and pension or CNP exam and touched on the process for appealing denied claims. Lastly, we highlighted support resources for veterans navigating the appeals process. With this knowledge in your arsenal, you're now better equipped to navigate the world of sleep apnea and VA disability. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with fellow veterans who will find this video helpful. And check out more of our videos and resources that may be helpful to you in the description box below. Until next time, stay informed to stay ahead.